Hey guys, um, question for Tobin. Yeah. How many uh, apprentices can a man have? <laughs> Only one good one. Yeah. She's right. <laughs> Never played with anyone so thoroughly dedicated and smart and handsome. <laughs> Did I say that? Well, this is awkward. Huge fan. Been watching Saw since I was 16, so 12 years now. And uh, this question is for Tobin. The whole time I was watching the Saw series, the one thing that I was always curious about was Dr. Gordon's story. So I didn't know what your opinion on it was uh, about him actually being involved with your whole journey throughout the entire series and all your tracks, even after you were gone. Boring. <laughs> no, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you were my second favorite friend. <laughs> second favorite. I'll show. <laughs> <laughs> Oh we didn't even prepare like that. Uh, well, look, the, look, the movie, <laughs> the movie's scary. What a great scene, because that's going to for YouTube tonight, actually. Yeah, kiss um, It was 11 o'clock at night, and Tobin, uh, my, my phone rings, and it's, hey, Costas, it's Tobin Bell. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, fuck. Jigsaw <laughs> is calling me at night. Is this the setup? Somehow, like you're working off each other, but there's this. Oh, <laughs> can't grab it. <laughs> a, a true story. Who has this scam yet? Look, fucking Apple Care. Bullshit, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Apple Care doesn't call me going, just checking on your phones. All things working. Fuck you. <laughs> and you answer it, and the guy's like, Hello, I'm from Apple Care. <laughs> right there, I'm the maid. I am in San Francisco. Just press nine and you'll give me. I can control screen and make very economic. Fuck you, Apple. Don't answer that shit. They don't fucking call you. Apple, you can't even call them without being on hold for two fucking days. Like they're calling me, just checking up on your shit. You see what I said? Apple Care. said Apple Care, right? Yeah. Fuck off. Have you had separately any connection like that with anybody else that you work with? Are you trying to ask if he's cheated on me? <laughs> I'm just wondering where you're going with this. I signed on uh, to do Saw because of three things. One, I had never worked with Danny Glover and I wanted to work with him. Uh, <laughs> and uh, second, I had a car payment. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the third was the moment. Right. The moment that you're talking about. I tried to prank Tobin in our last scene with a whoopee cushion. <laughs> he was so serious. And it wasn't working right. It was a total failure. And he looks at me and he says, What's up? Uh, where are you? You know? And he's like, He likes to be connected when you act. I said, oh, forget it. I'm trying to do a fart joke and <laughs> it's not working. Forget it. Now I'll be present with you. <laughs> if only I could be a serial killer's assistant. <laughs> Can you please to be helping me with this? With this? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, she, she comes in and she's, she kicks ass and she's a villain. I'm like, oh, really? It's a love story. <laughs> she comes in with groceries. Oh, right. <laughs> I have to work with the material. I'm like, Tiny. You come into a movie where it's like you're gonna be a super villain and you like look like a fairy and <laughs> Donnie Wahlberg's character in uh, Saw Two. What a prick! <laughs> uh, that you know what he did to Amanda. You know what he what he did to Amanda. We don't even know what he did to Amanda. You know it's been hinted at. You know, she's a junkie, she, you know, who knows what else she did to manipulate her and to... So as far as I'm concerned, uh, uh, the 
Detective whatever his fucking name. What was his name? Prick. <laughs> oh, yeah, Prick. That's Detective Prick. Don, Donnie got what his... I adored Donnie. I loved working with Donnie Wahlberg. He, Donnie is, a, is an actor with a very strong sense of truth. And he will not say anything that he thinks is bullshit. He, so working through lines with him in Saw 2 was heaven. He was very, very forceful in that way. And I, so I, lo- I adored him, working with him. But his character, he got what he deserved. He said to me, okay, so basically you're going to be chained to a wall for about, you know, a little short of 18 days. And I thought, okay, cool, because I'd read the script. I'm like, okay, uh, figures as much. And uh, I thought when they said chain to the wall, it'd be like a fake chain, you know, maybe plastic or, you know. Oh, no. Figure it in in CGI later. No, we were chained to a wall. With real chains. Six, starting Steel at 6 a.m. in the morning. And we had to time our bathroom breaks. You, there was only one guy. There was one guy who had the key for both of us. Remember that, Lee? And we would just watch this guy wherever he went. We were watching him. Like, if he disappeared to craft service, we're like, where did he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? He's got the key. He's got the key. They, they really were chained. He's a man with the key. And uh, so we were trapped in there. And, and so Shawnee's daughter's kind of running around. And we're about to do the eagle pit scene. And Shawnee's already a little nervous. And we're about to do it. We just throw her in the eagle pit. And, and she comes over to me. And she goes like this. And she goes, there's a baby in my mommy's belly. This thing. And she had told anyone she was pregnant. So now she's surrounded in the eagle being pushed in. And I'm like, oh my God. And it was just this. It was just I couldn't tell anyone I was pregnant. You have no Amanda. I don't know what you said. And it was so very, very early. I just told the wardrobe lady, and that's, you think like these things are really thought out, like Amanda, in hindsight, you know, it was part of the training, desexualizing, and, you know, too, with the pajamas and the, the inception for that creative choice was trying to hide being pregnant. <laughs> it was very early on, but that was bad timing. I'm sorry for that time. <laughs> When I first met Tobin, he was very serious about it. He's a serious man. And then one day when he was on that bed, when he was having that scalp operation, something happened and he burst out laughing and we were laughing. That, that was one of the greatest days, remember that? The director thought we were flirting with each other because he couldn't quite tell what was going on. But, uh, you know. First of all, backstage, they were talking about, I think it started with swimming, and Tobin said, you know, it's all about flexibility. You have to be flexible. It really helps you day. And they were talking about the benefits of being flexible. And obviously, in everyday life, it helps you pick up a pencil off the floor. It just makes all everyday life easier. But nothing compares to the impression that it puts on a person when you have a conversation with them. And then you just go, so look, Costas, anyway, the other day, I was going through my script in preparation. That's what we're talking about, flexibility. I know it doesn't translate well, but it's beautiful. You ever seen that before on this stage? Come on. I've had bad dreams, but not because of so. But there was that one phone call from Tobin Bell at 11 o'clock at night. That stayed with me. <laughs> I made a career out of making movies that nobody sees. I love so that. the fact, thank you, brother. But the fact, the fact that they, you know, they called me and they said, "Hey, do you want to be a part of an already successful franchise that's going to come out in 2,000 screens, regardless of how it turns out?" I was like, "Fuck yeah!" The agent's like, "Why don't you read it?" I'm like, "Fuck yeah!" The agent's like, well, "What should I tell them?" Fuck yeah! They're like, "Well, I'm going to let them sit on it for two days." I'm like, "If you fuck this up." <laughs> Why don't you just re-fucking tell him yes?